So what mathematical way do want to do? just change. What do you get All right. Good afternoon. Any questions before we start? All right. We, but yesterday we started with working on an example. Um, I almost finished that, but I need to add one more thing to the last step that we did um, yesterday. So we were supposed to design or synthesis a four-bar mechanism, crank rocker. We would like to have a crank rocker mechanism such that the rocker covers degree. So if this is the four bar mechanism that we are going to have we would like when this mechanism, when this link which is a crank complete a whole circle this guy just moving only by 45 degrees. So this is what we want to do. Um, we said you can start from, we are going to start from scratch. So pick a point, any point that you would like on the plane. So it's going to be this point, for example, 04. Then draw a line in any direction uh, with any angle that you would like. Uh, and pick a point which is going to be B1, any point in this line. So B1 can be any point in this line, suppose like this. Here, then draw another line with the angle of 45 degrees with the first line and find the corresponding point of B2. How can I find that? Just draw a circle with this center and this radius. You will end up to point B2. Then connect these two, extend. You are going to get a line. In this line, pick a point at any location that you would like. And label that as O2. It's going to be the location of this joint. Then measure this, B1, B2, draw a circle with this diameter. So this is diameter, draw a circle. With this diameter, the intersection with this line, we call it A1, which is going to represent this joint when the mechanism is at position B1, and the other intersection, we call it A2, which represents uh, the link 2 when uh, Rocker is at the position of A2. Now we have the mechanism O2, A1, B1, O4. So if you add a motor here, when this is running, it's moving from position 1 to position 2. At the same time, it's moving from position B1 to position B2, which is going to have 45 degrees distance from the first position. And on the written motion, it's going to go to the stopping point. Um, one thing that you should check after, now this is your mechanism. This is the mechanism that you have designed. You should check if it's a crank rocker mechanism or not. So you should check the grace of criteria. You should measure O to A, uh, AB, O4B, 
and O to A. After you measure that, find the sh uh, shortest link and longest link, and this should satisfy this first, because it should be ratio of mechanical. Yes. So A1, B1 is the length from A to B? Yes. So that or really, A to B2. Okay, so that really, though, you could put that point way over there. It doesn't really matter. For point O2? Yeah. Yes. So As I said, you can pick any point in this lab. Okay. It's, uh, we have five free choices, and one of them is location of O2, because I didn't add any restrictions with the problem. I would like to have only crank for can cancer. It's 45 degree for the like So after you check this, if you if you meet this, you should check if if shortest link is adjacent to the ground. So you should say if this guy is a rock uh, is a crank or not. If you can satisfy or meet both criteria, you can use this design as for this problem. But if it if you couldn't satisfy one of them or none of them, so you, what you need to do, you need to change the location of O2, pick another point somewhere else, and try for that one. So this is how you can get the desired mechanism or the desired task that you want to generate. Make sense? So if you couldn't meet this criteria, back to the free choices. One of the free choices is the location of O2. Instead of picking at this position, pick somewhere here or on the left. And one more thing before we go through the next uh, problem. On forward motion, when this O2A is moving from this position to, to this position, on the forward motion, B1 is going to start moving from this location to the other location, to this, uh, another extreme position. And this angle is 180 degrees. On the return motion, it's gonna back to the starting position, and this is gonna back to the starting position, and it's again 180 degrees. We call it a, uh, we call it it's a. Uh, we have an equal time for forward and back motion because timing ratio is one because. The angle that you need to go for a forward motion is equal to the angle that you need for the backward motion. So since these two angles are the same, you have this uh, same equal time for the forward and the backward, or timing ratio is one. Later on, we will see if we want to design something with a different timing ratio than one, what, what we need to do. So for example, we would like to design something with a timing ratio of 1 over 2. Forward motion, we would like to have half the speed of backward motion. So, and as I said, the distance between A and B is important. If you would like to have something like this for the length, that's fine. Or even for this, if you want to have something like this, that's fine as well. What is important? The distance between the joints. So this is important. We measure this thing. Right here, as you see, I have the coupler as a curve. We need that. Now that was the function generation. And um, now we move to the Motion generation.
x-axis, y-axis. Suppose you have this rigid body you would like to move this rigid body at this position to this position. So design a four-bar mechanism such that it generates this desired motion for this rigid body. So this is the object which you would like to have it at this position and then at this position. It's a motion generation because the desired task is the motion of a rigid body. What you can do, just select a line inside the object. So you can select any line. Suppose I pick this A and B. So find that line at the second position. So if this is A1, B1, find the location of A and B on the second position. A2, B2. So what we want to do, we would like to find the location of O2 and location of O4 such that when I have this mechanism, when it's moving from this position to this position, the, this object is moving from this location to this location. So I'm looking for the position of O2 and O4. This is what we want to do. So a motion generation, with two precision points. We are given with two desired or precision points and we would like to generate that desired task. So what we can do, let me start with O2. How can I locate the position, location of O2? If this mechanism is moving from this position to this position, link O2, A1, from this position, it's going to move to this position. So, But what we know that this distance and this distance should be the same because they are the, they, they are the length of the same links. This is link 2. So link 2 at this position and link 2 at this position. So the location at point O2 has the same distance from A1 and A2. So. This is what we know about the location of joint O2. So now, if you want to find a point with the same distance from these two points, what you can do, you can connect A1 and A2 and draw the perpendicular bisector. So this is perpendicular bisector of A1, A2, A1, A2. Any point in this line, any point located in this line has the same distance from A1 and A2. So any point here is a candidate for uh, O2. So pick, pick one. So I pick at this position. You can pick any other location on this line. So if I connect this to A1, it, I'm going to get the, the first link, which has a distance of, which has the length of A. It is link 2. When it's moving to this position, this length is going to have the same distance from this position. So I could locate O2. We can do the same things for O4. Connect these two, draw a perpendicular bisector for B1, B2, and pick one point here. I pick somewhere here, and connect O4 to B1. Now, when this mechanism is moving, link A, link O to A is moving from this position to this position. At the same time, link O4B is moving from this position to this position. So we don't have 
one a specific design, we, we can have infinite different design uh, for two, for, for motion generation with two prints, uh, precision points. Any question about this? Now, if I have this mechanism, I'm sure that this mechanism is going to move this, this object from this location to this location. If you add a motor here, it's going to run continuously, for example, if it's a crank tracker. But I would like to restrict the motion of this mechanism to these two positions. I don't want to pass, I don't want to move the object further than this or before that this location. What can I do to do that? I would like to restrict the motion of this four-bar mechanism to this position. So it should move from this position to this position, then back to this position and it continues. We are going to use the examples that we did for this. Design a four bar mechanism, crank rotor, such that it covers 45 degrees. Now, here I'm saying that I would like to add, let me just get to that. I would like to add. I would like to have a four bar mechanism such that this link is acting as a rocker. So this link is acting as a rocker. And it moves from this position to this position. So I'm gonna I would like to have a crank rocker mechanism such that the rocker has a restrict motion between this position and this position, which is this angle. So what I can do is, so I can fix O2 uh, here. These are two lines. We have started from O4. We draw two lines with the desired angle. So I already have this line and this line. Pick one point. Suppose I pick this point here. We pick one point here. We could find the corresponding point on the other line. Connect them, extend. At any desired point, fix O2, and then draw a circle with this distance as a diameter. <coughs> Label it as a CND. So now, look at this mechanism, O to C, and this is D. O to C and D, and um, let me see, O4, O6. O6, C, D, and O2. O6, C, D, and O2. This is a four bar mechanism. One is drawn, two, three, and four. It's a crank, it should be a crank rocker mechanism. When you have a motor here, when it's running continuously, it's gonna move the rocker from this position and this position. So what is what is what does it mean? It's gonna move this guy from this location to this location and it uh, continues. So we are saying that it's a diode. The new mechanism that I added, the extra mechanism that I added, is a diode, which was added to the, this uh, current mechanism, such that it can restrict the motion of the mechanism between these two desired positions.
So just look at this mechanism. This is the mechanism that I designed. One, two, three, and four. It's gonna move this rigid body from this position to this position. But if I want to restrict the motion between these two, I don't want the mechanism is moving further than this position or just, we would like to have a restricted, a motion restricted between these two. We draw the lines between this and the other one. And we are designing a crank rocker mechanism such that the rocker has a restricted motion between these two. If you do the same thing that I explained, you will get this guy and this location. And if you add a diet here, it's gonna move the mechanism from this position to this position. And when it continues, it's gonna back this to the uh, original position. And you already restricted the motion between these two. So this is how we add a diet. Some of the project that some of the groups may need to add the diet, driver diet for the uh, mechanism, depending on the project that you choose, but this is how it works. So now I'm gonna move from two precision points to three precision points. What if we are given with three desired so one, two, suppose you would like to move the, uh, this object to this position, for example. So you would like to touch this position, this position, and this position. You pick a line from the object and you just track the motion of that line. A, B is that line, that part, A1, B1, first position, A2, B2, second, and A3, A3 is the third one. The idea would be the same. Wherever the location of O2 is, it should have the same distance from A1, A2, and A3 because all three represent the first leg or second leg. So using this information, you draw a perpendicular bisector between A1 and A2. You draw the perpendicular bisector between A2 and A3, and intersection is going to be that point. You can draw the perpendicular bisector between A1 and A3, but you will get the same result. So you can locate position of joint O2. Here you could choose any point in this line in the perpendicular bisector, but when you have three precision points, you will find it by the intersecting these two by uh, perpendicular bisector. Same things for O4. O4. Now, this is going to be the mechanism. O2, A, B, O4. When it's moving from this position to this position and this position, a1, B1 is going to move to A2, B2, and A3, B3. This is our three desired uh, location. All right, let me ask you After you locate 
the position at O2 and O4, how can I restrict the motion of this mechanism between these three positions? <coughs> I would like to restrict the motion between these three. I don't want to pass this or go before the first position. So I would like to restrict the motion between these two positions. So work on this. Can I ask? Number 18. Where are you? Okay. Say it again. Uh, did you did you learn what we did for two precision points? I would like to restrict the motion between these two. Do you know how did we do that for for that problem? So you could ask. I mean, if you couldn't follow what we are doing, so you could you could ask and just stop me before I go to the next topic. So um, let me move to someone. Number 45. She's not here. Okay. Number three. No? All right. <clears throat> I would like to restrict the motion of this mechanism, this four bar mechanism, link one, two, three, four, between this position and this position, between O2, A1 and O2, A3. So back to the first problem. I'm going to add a driver, a dyad to this mechanism such that the rocker of that extra mechanism is moving between these two extreme lines. So this is O2, pick any point. I pick this point, but you can pick any other point. And this line. Find the corresponding in the other lines. Connect these two, extend, pick a point, measure this, draw a circle with that diameter. It's going to be O6. If this is C, mechanism of O6, C, D, O2 is going to do this for us. If you add a motor here, it's going to run, it's going to run this link from this position to this position. At the same time, it's going to move 
this link from this position to this position. And at the in the middle, you are going to touch the second position. And when it's going to back to the uh, starting point, it's going to back to the uh, starting position of uh, original mechanism. So adding a diet is a technique that you can use to restrict the motion of uh, your mechanism. Otherwise, if you add a motor here, it's going to run, and you are going to pass uh, this position. Any question on this? In this slide, you can see I pick one point here. Uh, And I connect this, pick the one point here, draw a circle with this diameter, and when it's moving from this position to this position, you are going to touch this, and then it goes to this position, you are going to touch the first uh, desired location. And it's kind of back to the original. All right. Now, we can talk about the quick return mechanism. Um, first, let me explain. I mean, I already explained about that, but. When we had this four bar mechanism, when it's moving from this position to this position, this is a four bar motion, the crank, it covers 180 degrees. And on backward or return motion, when it's going to back to the first position, this crank is going to cover 180. 180 equals to 180 means whatever the speed of forward motion, it's going to be equal to the speed of backward motion. So we are saying that we have the same uh, speed for the forward and the backward. Or timing ratio is 1. Or velocity of, or a speed of forward over speed or velocity of backward is going to be 1. Or time that you need for the forward motion is going to be equal to the time of backward. So, but there are some cases in which you would like to have a different timing ratio. Look at this mechanism. Forget about this green slider and the red one. This offset the slider crank. This guy, this guy, and this is slider. This is a cutting tool that you attach to to the on the top of the surface, and you put the motor here, for example. When it goes to the forward motion, it's gonna remove the material from the surface because it's a cutting tool. So it's a cutting tool. It's supposed to remove the material from the surface. But on the backward, it doesn't do anything. So. Since it's working in this way, on the forward motion you want to move slowly, but on the backward motion, since it doesn't do anything, it can the, the speed can be faster. So for example, you would like to have V forward over V backward it equals to one over T. It depends on your desire. Design. So you would like to have the speed of forward, one third of the backward. How can you design this mechanism? So we would like to do this. Let me back to this problem that we did here. I'm going to repeat that 
but this time with a different uh, timing ratio. We would like to design a crank locker mechanism with 45 degree as rocker with timing ratio of equals to what is the timing ratio? One over one point twenty five. So this is the desired task that we would like to uh, generate. So it means when the crank link is moving, we would like to have a rocker moving by 45, but the speed of the forward motion we would like to be, uh, over the backward motion, we would like to be at 1 over 1.25. So, If the angle for a forward motion, for the rocker, when it starts from position 1 to position 2, which is the extreme position, it is labeled by angle of beta, uh, forward <coughs> angle for the crank is beta. And backward, angle is alpha. What we know is alpha plus beta is 360. We would like to cover one side, one uh, whole circle, which is 360 degrees. So whatever is the angle for the forward plus whatever is the angle for the backward should be 360. Here it was 180, 180. <coughs> The other thing that we know here, if timing ratio was 1, then you could say alpha should be equals to the beta. The angle that you need to go for forward should be equal to the angle of backward motion. But if you have something different, you can say This the back the forward motion uh, backward motion angle divided by forward angle should be one over whatever is the timing ratio. Here is one over one point twenty five. So if you solve this two equation to announce, you can say one point twenty five of alpha equals to beta and just replace beta with this, <coughs> alpha plus 1.25 alpha equals to 360, 2.25 of alpha equals to 360, alpha is going to be 1.25. One sixty. Either plug in here or plug you can substitute alpha here. Beta is gonna be two hundred. So then it tells us we would like to design a crank rocker mechanism such that 
when crank is going by the angle of beta, which is 200, the rocker is moving from first position to the second position to color 45 degree. And on the backward motion, we would like to have angle of 160 for the crank <coughs> to complete the motion of this full bar mechanism. So in that case, we can generate this desired timing ratio. So this is how you can find the alpha and beta. Now, the next step is how can I design this? How can I design the mechanism? Uh, we define something as deviation angle. Deviation angle is defined as the absolute value of 180 minus alpha or 180 minus beta. You will get the same answer. So 180 minus alpha is 160 or 180 minus 200. In any case, you will get 20 degrees. So the deviation angle is defined as 20 degrees. So this is what you need to do. Pick a point, any point, and label that as O4. Draw a line in any direction. And second line, draw a line with the angle of 45, whatever is the angle of rocket. Pick one point here, any point. D1. Pick the other points on the mechanism and label that as B2. D1 and B2. If we had timing ratio equals to one, we could connect these two and extend in both directions and pick a point and just label it as an O1. But here, just draw a line in any direction from B1. It can be any in any direction. This direction, this direction. And from B2, draw a line which makes the angle of deviation angle with the original line. So the second line should be, should give us the angle of, the deviation angle with the original line. So you cannot pick any desired point. It's going to be one point. So suppose this is the point, label that as O2. I could locate O4, I could locate B, I could locate O2. If I can locate A, then I can have the mechanism. Um, suppose A is somewhere here, suppose. A1, when it rotates by the angle of beta, it's gonna move to this position, A2. Now look at this, O to A1, plus A1, B1, is O2, B1. And right here, A2, B2, A2, B2. Minus O2, A2 is gonna be O2, B2. So this big guy minus this is gonna give me this part, O2, B2. You have you don't have the location of A1, but you have the location of O2. You have the location of B1. So you can measure O2B1. So this is given. O2B1. 
you have the location of O2, you have the location of B2, you have the location of O2, B2. What is O2, A1? O2, A1 is our crank links. So O2, A1 is crank. Crank. What is O2, A2? It's again crank. So O2, A2 is a crank. What is A1, B1? A1, B1 is our uh, coupler. And A2, B2, A2, B2 is again coupler. So write this equation, crank plus uh, rocker coupler is O2, um, B1 and coupler coupler minus crank is O2 B2. Two equation solved for coupler length and crank length. So if you add them up, you can get two coupler is gonna be O2 B1 plus O2 B2, then coupler is going to be O2 B1 plus O2 B2 dividing by 2. So you have, you can measure these two dividing by 2, you can get the coupler, you can get the crank, just locate A1 based on whatever you find for crank, and then you have your mechanical. O2, A1, A1, B1, and O4. I, uh, I was going to talk about the project, but I'm going to post some kind of project on Canvas, and I will talk about that on Monday. Yes. So, for the velocity of the head, they change every single Where, Charlie? No, After you calculate this, and last night keep them in one vector because you need to save it somehow you want to get the vector. Suppose here you define the variable of i equals to one. Suppose you calculate the uh, vector f. So say f. Um, F1 to I equals to this vector that you have It has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way, 9, 9 results. Suppose you are looking for the first one, which is F1 to X. Okay. So say F1 to X is the value that I have. I equals to F1. The first elements of this vector should be saved in F1, 2, 1. Then add I by 1. When it goes to the first line, I is 2 now. So it's going to calculate the force for the theta equals to 5 and save it in F1, 2, X, 2. 
at the end, when you cross F1 to X, you will get, uh, for example, 72 plus 0 to 72. You will get 72 terms. Each corresponding to the whole five and each representing F1 to X. Okay. Makes sense? Yeah, you yeah. should just start writing that. I just explained the way that you need to. Yeah. Well, okay. And then for these, how do you put the question? I have the so somebody wants to find that yeah. generation of central gravity for me to So you should write the x component and y component of central gravity. Then take the sweep and then differentiate twice. Because if you differentiate once, you will get velocity. Okay. If you differentiate twice, you get acceleration. And this is what you want. For this point, it's easy. For the second name, which is somewhere here. Yeah. You try to reach to this point. This vector plus this vector. What is the vector? What is the x component of this center of gravity of the three? He knows where I live. You have any time. It's going to be x component of this plus x component of this. This is a. This is r g three. Okay. This is theta two. This is theta three. So it's going to be a cosine of like theta 2 plus rg3 of cosine of theta 3. Differentiate twice, you will get acceleration. So it accelerates. For the y, just change cosine to sine and differentiate twice. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And for, for the last, just before, I just want to show yeah, some calculations. For this thing, which is linked for. Yeah. Don't go through this plus this plus this. You can, but it's easier that you go through this way because this is not changing. So if you, if you differentiate that, so it's going to be zero. Plus. Exactly. D for the x is going to be d plus whatever rg4 cosine of theta 4. Okay. You deal with this. There is no y also. And if you differentiate this, you will get zero. Okay. Rich and ceasing. Okay. Yeah, and I'll, I'll take a drop in it because I didn't send it in. I don't care. Okay. I just think it's better than a zero. Yes. No, no, it's so. No, no, just send it to him and ceasing me. Okay. Uh, okay. All right, thank you. Yep. And then I'll set a question on the homework we just got back. I thought you just want to show me the, the graph and I can tell you it looks good. So yes. if you have 